Okay, so Capricorn, Capricorn in the first house, or if you have a Capricorn rising and Capricorn ascendant in your chart. So let's talk about this. Capricorn is the seagull of the zodiac. And usually you will see them more of, you know, their upper body is very lean, very you know, muscular in a sexy kind of way, that kind of thing. Um, usually their upper body is very pleasing and their lower body can, you know, be in a more flabby side or can be quite thick. But um, I would say that um, aside from their appearance, their body physic, it's more of the vibration that they give out to the world. There is something about their bro, the, their bros, and their forehead can be quite prominent, or there is just something in focus right there as well. Also, their eyes can be prominent, but um, it's prominent in a way that um, it creates some form of seriousness in them, wherein they always want to be seen. As someone serious and even without trying you know the way that they look is really more on the neutral side of things it's more toned down I would say there's really nothing special about them but you will see them more of it they give a vibration of a business like kind of appearance you know and that could be sexy that can be normal depending on the person seeing um, taken depending on the eyes of the person really so um, yeah so that is really their prominent features their upper body their chest usually speaking of chest they're usually flat chested um, I would say probably it could vary though because there is a tendency that they can have Virgo in their midheaven or sometimes Libra in their midheaven so um there are chances to to gain breasts but for the most part in general as a whole with the blueprint of a capricorn rising person it's usually on the flat side not much breast part they can gain weight though they can gain weight especially um again like i mentioned at the lower body part so yeah um Capricorn rising people are very serious um, and they need to be taken seriously and this is how they want people to treat them they can be quite on the gloomy side you know um, they have um, their 11th house in Scorpio so they are quite pessimistic I would say they also tends to attract friends that quite think negatively about them or you know maybe they are secretly jealous of them so they tend to attract those kinds of friendship and their ideals in life can be quite pessimistic all at the same time i mean it's like they want to see every aspect of things but they're leaning to that negative Thing, you know <laughs> the most worst situation that couldn't happen is probably their focus but they're never gonna tell you but deep inside of them um, because of that 12th house in Sagittarius they they do believe in being optimistic it's like you know they're telling you negative thing but secretly inside of them okay I'm wishing for a good result in this you know it's like they're telling themselves something positive but they're telling you um, negative so there is some form of contradiction with a lot of Capricorn rising people now Capricorn rising people is more um, very analytical practical and they are not easily influenced by people so you know even though you try to persuade them they are not really the type that can give in to what other people will tell them though capricorn rising people have their second house in aquarius so there could be sudden things happening in terms of their financial um situation the money that they earn and their their own energy 
they can spend a lot of time and energy to things that can be um, a waste of time even though they they don't like to waste time but they can spend their time and energy to things that are quite meaningless from time to time this can also be a situation wherein they can you know purchase um, something big you know they can earn a lot of money or they can lose a lot of money at the process of things also this is a situation wherein if you are a capricorn rising person and you are having some form of difficulty in terms of your finances the best way to remedy this is to do something you have never done before and this is your aquarius second house speaking to you if you do something that you have never done before you can actually amass a huge amount of wealth in you this is a situation as well wherein you know um you need to be careful because sometimes you know capricorn people can be quite forgiving um with the the people that they working with sometimes you know it's not already helpful maybe there are unhealthy situations happening right there and you're letting it you're letting things go so that is the reason why you're losing a lot of money in the process of things but um yeah um there is that situation as well your third house is um in pisces so capricorn rising people can be quite sensitive can be quite um like i said um they are introverts sensitive emotional as well they have those tendencies even though they might not show it to people um but they can get easily hurt all at the same time as well they can be quite rigid all also you know rigid and inert especially with that fifth house in the sign of taurus so yes you know they they are good with structures and all that they can accomplish quite a lot of things in life but you know when it comes to fun excitement and all that um they're not really open to that idea you know basically if things are not tried and tested they are not willing to go for that they're not willing to take the risk they are not a very risky sign after all like, they might wish for it they might idealize for it but they're never gonna do that you know they're never gonna do any kind of risk the only time that they are willing to take a risk is that when when there is a crisis situation happens in their life which comes in very rarely very rarely that they enter a crisis situation but when they do um they usually uh, they rarely rely on other people though usually they need to do something about it by themselves they need to work on that by themselves and they will be able to um overcome whatever crisis situation happening in them they have virgo in their ninth house so they can be quite detail oriented with their goals it's like when they want to do something they plan to do something or they visualize something that they want to manifest in their life they can actually make it happen they have they can create like uh, some form of goal you know step by step process and how they can achieve that that thing in their life the only thing about them is that they they don't usually dream big you know they can they can be quite modest with their goals and dreams in life so um yeah they they don't usually dream big so you know the success that they tend to attain is not really super big or anything like that it's more of a standard unless they do take the risk so um like i said it's going to differ you know this is a blueprint of a uh, capricorn rising but everyone is going to be different depending on your planetary alignments and depending on whether you have a risk factor in you so if you are just a normal regular um, capricorn rising person then you know 
if you have a strong Capricorn rising in your chart, then you'll probably um, be more, you know, you want things safe. Safe is better for you. And you take pride of the fact that you are not a risk taker. Because um, safe and security is the most important thing for you. Being practical like that. And that... that stability that you have is something that you really really want to keep in your energy field so your fourth house is in the sign of aries and um there could be something about your family life wherein you want to do things by yourself you don't really want to rely on your family so much also this can be a situation wherein there could be um, you know, I don't know what to call this, you know, um, talking back with family members can happen. Uh, this can be a situation wherein maybe you want it to be more independent. You don't rely so much with your family and uh, I don't know, it makes me feel that, you know, you are an initiator and you don't really relax so much in your own home own family you wanted to create your own family though you have that desire to do that but you don't rely on your family setup that kind of thing so i mean capricorn is still a cardinal sign so you are um a person that wants to create something and you will and you can actually manifest things that you want to happen in your life. The thing with Capricorn is that they are able to set a goal and actually take action to manifest that in their life. That kind of thing. So, um, yeah, you do. You, there is a tendency that you probably have a noisy mother or something like that. A mother that is quite impulsive. And you're probably the one who's trying to, um, trying to shut your mom out or something, or reprimand them or something like that. It's like um, you're older than your mom, and you're trying to um, control her, or make her want to just chill out. That kind of thing. It's it has that feeling wherein your mom is the one who pushes you hey do something exciting don't be so boring and you're like shut up mom there is that tendency or if not that there is some form of similarity going on in terms of your family so um yeah let's not forget that aries is a very fiery sign so with the fourth house with our home and family this is something that there is some energy of agitation in that it could be that you know even though you are at home you're still working i mean you are quite of a workaholic person and this is what you what you find pleasure on you find pleasure with your work life and also if there is something that you don't want you try to isolate yourself you try to um, you don't really say something that you that you don't like this you don't like that but you try to quiet down you try to um, seclude yourself into something when you don't like something that kind of scenario you also have this um, uh, let's say cancer in your seventh house so when it comes to partnerships you really can be very emotional as well um, also, you value the input of your own family when it comes to partnerships. Maybe you want someone that is accepted by your own family or maybe this is a situation we're in. Um, what do you call that? You know, um, it's like a marriage setup that was predestined or something like that, you know. Uh, family type of marriage I don't know what you guys call it um, yeah it's like a dating set up with a mar family situation in mind something like that 
Another thing as well that I forgot to mention is that, you know, with that fifth house in Taurus, you might not be the type to initiate the fun. You, you can you are the type to wait the other person to do something in your life you know to initiate things you can initiate stuff in terms of business in terms of work but when it comes to something fun and flirting around and all that um unless you have certain aspects or transits happening in that house you are the type of person that will usually um step back and not do anything which can be quite irritating for your other the other person if especially if you're dealing with a, a man who is a Capricorn rising they are maybe not that willing to take action because let us just say they can be quite lazy when it comes to their love affairs they're more on the work side so not much activity and excitement in terms of work also this can also raises the fact that they can be um, they can be um, quite materialistic and their approach to love and relationships can be materialistic as well like maybe they're trying to give you gifts um, making it pricier <laughs> pricier the better that kind of stuff also the way that they choose their partners can be quite materialistic all at the same time but they do have a soft spot because of that seventh house enhancer and if they do go in a, into a marriage or relationship they can be there for the long haul basically also with that seven, with that sixth house in gemini you know um they can really try out a lot of things in terms of their work which can create some form of instability in terms of their work life so they can you know there could be something that is happening out of the blue in terms of their work maybe a problem over here or an issue over here or you know there is some form of instability in terms of their work life this can also manifest in a way wherein maybe they they need to work on two things maybe i have a business over here and also a business over there and a business over here so they can be working with different companies or you know having different jobs as well which can be manifest so this is um highly susceptible with gossips as well so be careful of that um maybe people like i said your 11th house is scorpio and your sixth house is gemini so you are very susceptible with that gossips or people talking behind your back or people you know whenever they see something they need to gossip about you or something like that but this is just more of a way that they are quite envying um, your achievements in life because you are quite a successful person you have the capacity to be successful in life all at the same time um, did I miss out anything you do have that 10 house in Libra and you know this is a Venus related sign so your social um, life social reputation is going to be very important for you um so let us say that you know capricorn rising are quite introverts and they easily um let's say they easily get um they have self-esteem issues as well so there is a need for for other people to like them so that they can gain some form of confidence so there is a need that you know um, to be acknowledged by people that's those kinds of things for them for them to um, feel a lot more confident um, with their life with the things that they do and all that so um yeah I guess this is it for Capricorn rising people now um I'm going to mention here quite a few um, Capricorn rising celebrities like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, actually, there's a lot of politicians that also, politicians, governments, and kings and queens that has this alignment. Okay, we have uh, Prince Harry, Elizabeth II, 
um, I forgot I, I didn't list out the others um, but there w there are actually quite a few um, others that are Capricorn rising people as well so you will see that you know they always have a purpose in life um, it may not be entirely big it may be set out to them by their parents or their family but um, yeah there is a serious tone in their own energy Ariana Grande Megan Fox is also a, a Capricorn rising person Kylie Jenner as well as you can see um, a lot of these celebrities are more of you know even though they are celebrity they also create their own business and have stability in that especially Taylor Swift Zac Efron Sophia Loren as well and Anthony Hopkins and yeah I noticed that you know there is something with their with their eye area bro and their forehead that is quite prominent not the same way as if it's as not the same way with Aries you know not that not not the same way as if they have a wide forehead or anything like that it's just that you know you will just notice their eye feature and bro and forehead there is some form of um, I don't know is it attraction or there is some vibration in them that that is quite serious business-like and quite sexy neutral but more of you know I don't know there's just some oozing feminine or masculine energy in them that comes out so natural to everyone I would say maybe because of that mid heaven in the, the, the Libra part so it gives that per perfect body or so or the very least at their upper body it gives that energy and people don't usually notice the lower part of the body unless it's very obvious but it can be a situation wherein you know they have a perfect upper body that people can get attracted to because that is the first thing that people usually see so um yeah um yeah so um yeah this is my uh video on capricorn rising ascendant and in your first house i do hope you guys learn a few things about this video on capricorn and i'll see you guys next time please don't forget to like share and subscribe